Hi guys, welcome to Tamil Umi Technologies new video. In today's video, we will see how to run SQL queries on NoSQL DB. So what is NoSQL DB? Is it just saying no SQL? So no more SQL? No. No SQL means it is not only SQL. So this is a very popular thing came. No SQL means not not only SQL. So it is more than SQL. What SQL is offering, no SQL is offering more. So there are in recent times you might have seen something requirement like MongoDB comes up very often. Like whenever somebody is doing in PHP, people who are working with PHP and web service, they must be hearing the requirement of MongoDB combined with their uh, like uh, requirement. MongoDB is getting used recently more, more like most of the times. Why? Main thing is because it is using the JSON format. JSON is getting stored as like just same JSON. So that is the reason many projects, many web service, web related website projects, they were using MongoDB as a backend. So that is why MongoDB has become very popular and many people are using that's why requirement comes up. That is a very uh, first use case of MongoDB, MongoDB. And there are more use cases in the on the way. Now we are into the big data era, big data era. And there are a lot of NoSQL DBs are there. HBase, Apache HBase, Cassandra, and then you can say Titan DB. And then there is GraphDB, Neo.4j. There are a lot of NoSQL DBs are come up nowadays. And only main thing about NoSQL DB is you cannot write SQL queries on top of it. It has a lot of uh, benefits. You can access uh, like millions of uh, millions of records in there in the table. You, if you just want to pick one record, NoSQL DB is best one. But you cannot write aggregated functions like select star from table and do that uh, var condition everything that is not possible with NoSQL DB. It has its own writing queries and all. You instead of select star from you have to put scan and then give the table and all. So those things a little bit different in NoSQL DBs, which is fine. How do we write the uh, like uh, no SQL queries on top of NoSQL DB? Today that's what we are going to see. We have some tool which is very popular that is available for only HBase. The tool is named as Phoenix. In Phoenix, with using the Phoenix tool, Phoenix, Phoenix tool, using the Phoenix tool, what you can do is you can write, <coughs> see, it's a relational database layer on top of Apache HBase. So using this Phoenix uh, tool, you can write your SQL queries and in turn it becomes, it translates your query into HBase calls. So like directly if you are writing HBase calls and you have to use either the HBase shell or you have to use Java or um, you can you have to use some kind of programming language like Python or something. And yes, HBase is so fast. You can get the data very fast. Like in a milliseconds, you, the response time is milliseconds. You can get using that, but you have to learn Java or Scala or something. Some of the language to access ja uh, like uh, HBase data and make it useful. And also one more thing, what what you can do is you can use the Hive external table and the data is stored in HBase. Using the Hive external table, you can access the uh, HBase data. That is also possible. But again, H Hive is a very low, like high latency one. It is not supposed to use for low latency or real time use cases. Hive is not a uh, useful and you can do only slow jobs like the batch jobs and all you can do using Hive, you can use that. So there comes a Phoenix tool. Phoenix, what it does is you are writing SQL like SQL like queries. It translates that into HBase calls and it will, it's going to give you the low latency output. It's like immediately you will get it like same like Impala, massive parallel processing. Those kind of things are available in Phoenix. That's what we are going to see today. That is the benefit of the Phoenix. Many projects were using the tool. So many were even getting benefited. So how it is working and who developed this? this is developed by Salesforce. They developed it for them and then later they became the open source one. Now it is using very much. It's being used across many projects. And one of the thing is where it sits actually. <coughs> So HBase, HDFS is there. HBase stores the data in HDFS. As you, if you might not know, you should know. HBase is a very fast database and you can access it uh, like milliseconds of uh, data. In milliseconds, you can access the data, but that's in turn store the data into HDFS. And on top of HBase, there is a Phoenix query engine on top of the JDBC client. So this is how it works. So Phoenix is, is on top of that. With the Phoenix, you can easily access HBase with a low latency query. Using SQL query itself, you can write. SQL is most familiar language. Many of us know what is SQL, how to write queries in SQL. It's very easy, right? So that is why you can use it to access HBase data. 
and it is only useful for edge based not any other data stores the data is there in hdfs can i write a finish query to access it no it's not possible it is not meant for that so in order to that we'll first see what is edge based apache edge based as we just saw uh, like uh, recently edge based is a high performance horizontally scalable data store so it is like uh, you don't have to read it so it is a very fast data storage like if you have like billion millions of rows it's like google uh google also using a big table ba based on that logic only hbase also developed hbase is nothing but a nosql db it can hold hold millions of records like even more millions like i would say it's a billions of record based on your cluster setup and all it can store billions of records and the beauty part is you can access the one if you want to just access one record out of the million it can be done in mini like less than 1 second that is a very special about the hbase so what so you might be, i know what you are thinking okay let's uh, remove everything else then use hbase for everything so it is it's not work it will not work like that way because if you want to do aggregation or if you want to do some kind of operation hbase might not be suitable because it is not uh, used for aggregation one and those things it is not a useful thing but if you want to just access one record out of billions millions like what google is doing you are searching for some keywords it is just matching the keywords and go back and check and giving you the result right exactly those kind of use cases you can use hbase correct so for the use case you can do that but on top of that if you want to do analytics that also in such a fast way yes of course phoenix is there that's what it is so it is very simple so recently the many projects are using phoenix that is why i just want to give you overview how it is done and what is happening and this slides and all these things are so telling you what is the hbase data model how the data is stored and how it is distributed everything this is kind of more technical i don't want to dive into this right now in this video this video is idea is about to give you overview and overall picture how this things are getting done that's it and yeah hbase data model is also very simple and very useful it is interesting to learn that's what i seen like it stores in a key value pair and one row is there with the, using the row you can access the entire column it's very beautiful data structure uh, when i was learned it's very beautiful and you can also learn this i'll just give you the link to this ppt and all in the description you just go and so learn about it. it's very good it's interesting i would say and how it stores how to increase it what is the optimization everything you can do over that so if you see the comparison rdms and hbase uh, like it has query language sql it is only api access available at hbase so api means you have to write it in java or something like that so that is being over covered or covered by phoenix fine and other than that many people are using phoenix so like hatton works sales for sales was the one who created it and there are many projects they were using phoenix and deeper look this is how it works these are demons all this sort of things okay we'll not go into this i don't want to scare you so that's when it's it looks kind of more details but it is kind of uh, very easy one i would say that's it that is a uh, <coughs> that's about phoenix and this um, slide is available in internet for free i'll give you the link in the description it's open source project so you can feel free to download the code and also you can see that and uh, i i'm inspired by one more video of phoenix and i'm just doing this video so i'll give you the original video which inspired me to do that that you can watch that as well that will also give you more idea so there are a lot of data sources available a lot of databases available which one to use for which that is the main thing which we are facing like we have a high but that is high latency if you want a uh, low latency then you have hbase but it has only api access on top of api access you need to do something there are cassandra there are graph dbs there are sdfs itself you can store there are kinesis store there are kudu like there are a lot of many opportunities many uh, options are there so it is up to us to decide which one to use if you are preparing for big data or if you are deciding to do which tool to use you can just go through the architecture and find out that is possible and if you are preparing for the interview and if they ask you what is phoenix and what is the use of it have you used yeah you can tell this after uh, seeing this video i hope you will say phoenix is used for it's just a sql layer on top of which we that's it you can tell it easily and uh, yeah how it optimize that's one more interesting question and it has an interesting answer to like it optimizes in two way one is the client way from client when you submitting your job there itself it creates a parallel processing like if you are submitting one region server it uh, calculates where the data is there and then it uh, it makes it a parallel thing so that it runs in many it submits the job in a parallel way so that it is much faster and uh, data retrieval is also more faster and then in region side also it does some kind of optimization which skips some records which uh, skips some scans and all 
those are the very good things about phoenix and yeah that's it it is very easy easy to learn and easy to install in your machine if you have cloudera which already we posted in the video previously how to do and all so yeah that's it from this video i hope this video is useful for you and i hope you get interested to learn phoenix or something you got a knowledge about the phoenix that's it and if you want me to do any other different uh, tools to explain to you in this uh, video in, the, in our channel just let me know and this is armugam signing off bye bye take care see you in the next video